Team CV Big Day, we celebrated victories. Give you guys another video. Um, and right now, what I'm about to do is I'm about to do another q and um, Going through my comments that were left on uh, some of my videos and just looking at them, scrolling through them, reading some of them off and answering y'all questions. Um, because I did one before and it turned out really well. So I actually like doing this. Um, gives me a, a better way to kind of elaborate on, on some of the questions that I asked because it's just kind of hard to just, you know, write in an uh, answer takes a lot of time there may be more things that i would like to say about that specific question than um than just typing it so i thought this might be a good way to do that and it worked out the last time i did it so it seems like it's very helpful so i'm going to do it again uh before i start though if you're new to the channel check out this video check out another video and if you're finding good quality content be sure to hit the subscription button if you're someone that has already subscribed thank you for all the love and support keep doing what y'all doing um and let's get started so question one do you normally sign a five-year contract? What happens if it's not performing well after the first three months? Do you have it? Do you have to leave it for the rest of the contract? So that's a great question. I have never signed a five-year contract um, with anything, uh, whether it's putting an ATM into a location, whether it's with a processing company, um, uh, internet modem company. I mean, I don't think I've ever signed a five-year contract with anybody in with anything in my life. Um, so. I wouldn't do that, okay? There's definitely more options. I would continue looking for, you know, different options as far as like, um, if you're looking for something like processing, I'm not really sure. It just says, do you normally sign a five-year contract? If you're looking more in like a processing company, ISO, or anything like that, then um, there's definitely some out there that do month to month. There's some that do year. There's some that do two years, three years, five years is a really long time. Um, so I would just kind of look into that a little bit more. And then if the ATM isn't performing well in a specific business, um, I move it. Okay, I move it whenever I want, to be honest. Um, but I do give like a trial period for um, the actual business that I'm putting the ATM in there. I give them a three month window in the beginning when I first put the ATM up until that three month mark to decide if they want to take it out or if they don't, they're not digging it or if they're just like, you know what, you suck at performing and, and filling it up, then, you know, they have that opportunity to take it out. Um, after that, the year is like a, su uh, a successive year contract where it will renew at the end of the year automatically unless they give like a written notice um, saying that, hey, I don't want this ATM no longer in here. I don't want this ATM in here anymore. Um, so that's what that looks like. I hope that answers your question. Um, question, how will my ATM machine link up with my bank account to receive the recycled money and surcharge money? Will I have to provide bank information to the ATM vendor or, yeah, so like, that's a good question. That's going to be your, your processing company. Um, so pretty much what, what will happen is when you give them that information, as far as like your, um, you'll, you'll tend to have to give them like your driver's license, bless you. You'll tend to have to give them your driver's license. You'll give them, um, usually they'll ask for like a voided check or um, some a bank letter from your bank stating that, you know, this um, bank account is yours. This is what kind of bank account, it's a business bank account, things like that. That way they can kind of merge all that stuff together. And then when an ATM transaction does occur um, and your actual ATM, you're getting that money back into your account, the, much, the recycled money that you put in um, yourself in order to give the people the service that they're looking for. All right, um, so good question. Um, how much, how do you know how much to pay the business owner at the end of each month? Um, that's just going to be negotiable when I do decide to put an ATM into an actual location. You know, I determine how much I'm going to actually give them per transaction. You could do percent. You can do, you could, there's a, tons of different ways. Some people, you know, add add to it gradually, depending on the number of transactions that it's, that's occurring. Um, some people give more to the actual business owner if they decide that if the business owner and the ATM, which is yourself, the ATM deployer, um, decide that you want the business owner to fill up the ATM on your behalf. That way, all you're really doing is just owning the ATM, maintaining it when they, you know, when you need services, uh, which is there often. And you're really, really kind of hands away from the ATM machine at that point. You can give them more of a surcharge because obviously they're doing some, they're doing more work by putting their own money. I would never be. I would never allow people to put money into an ATM on my behalf with my own money. So if someone's going to do that, then just as are they're going to use their own money in order to put um, money into my ATM, whether that's, um, you know, someone, a cash loader that you hired or that's the business owner themselves who own the actual business where the ATM is in. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that answers your question. Um, is it a good idea to claim bankruptcy if you are already, if you are 
already starting up an ATM business. I, I don't know. I'm sorry, Louis. I don't know. I don't understand that question. I don't know anything about bankruptcy. I never filed for bankruptcy. I have no clue. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to say or act like I do know what you're talking about or what that question entails. So I'm sorry, man. I couldn't help you out there. How can I get a license? How much money to show for license? Um, so, I mean, that's going to vary depending on state and that you live in, depending on your county, depending on your city that you're in. Um, every city, every state's different. So you might have certain regulations in regards to opening up a business um, compared to a different state or a different county. Um, so that's just something you're going to have to dive into. Um, for me personally, I didn't get like an actual license. You do, you do want to get an entity for your business. You do obviously want to get a business bank account. Um, you could do it as a sole proprietor and utilize your um, your what is it called your social security number. Um, I never did that, you know, but that's something that you could look into and just kind of do some due diligence and more research on in regards to that situation. Uh, but as far as licensings and stuff like that, I wouldn't really be able to help you too much. Um, what about an S corp? So I'm he's probably referring to starting up an entity. Um, in the beginning, when you when you start your ATM business, again, you could do it as sole proprietorship. Use your Social Security, but you got, you could also do it as a like like set up as an entity of a LLC and S corp. Um, it just kind of depends. That's something that you're definitely going to want to sit down with a CPA or whoever does your taxes and kind of just you know talk to them about um, your situation, about your goals because everyone's goals are different. There's certain things you could do with S corp that you can't do with an LLC and vice versa. Um, you know, tax stuff is completely different. You know, there's. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it, and I don't want to sit up here and, and act like I'm an expert in regards to that stuff because I don't know, honestly, um, and it's going to depend on your situation. You definitely, if you're getting into this business or any type of business, I don't care what it is, you definitely want to have resources. You definitely want to have people that you can, um, you can contact and um, get professional advice from. Uh, pertaining to whatever it is. So if you're dealing with like marketing stuff in, in in reference to your business, then guess what? You should have a marketing dude or someone that's an expert on marketing. That way you can reach out and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I got going on. What do you think? Okay. Same thing in this case with a CPA. Hey, this is these are my taxes. These are my, you know, expenses. These are my X, Y, Z. You know, what should I do here? These, this is my dependence, my situation. And then kind of go from there. All right, so this is gonna be the last question because I don't want this video to get too, too long. Um, where is your ATM located? So I have multiple ATMs, I had a few ATMs. Um, I have them mostly in barbershops. I have them, um, I've had one in a bar. I've had them um, in restaurants. I had them in nail salons. I've had them in laundromats, tattoo spots. What else? Um, I even had it in a comic store to be honest. I don't have that anymore because the comic store just actually just went out of business completely. Um, so I don't have it in there anymore, but I have them in different locations, man. And when you do decide where you're gonna put it, you just wanna, again, um, talk to the business owner, find out some more information in regards to how many people are going into that business, how many people use car, how many people use cash, are they cash only? You know, what are their hours of operations? Are they open, you know, every single day of the week? Are they closed one day or two days a week? Um, you know, things like that are questions that you want to ask and you want to understand because when you're making that decision on whether or not you should put an ATM in there, you want to kind of like, how do I say it? You want to make sure you're not wasting time by putting an ATM somewhere that you just absolutely know is not going to do well. And then you put it in there and then you're dealing with all that stuff, you know, bolting it down and Trans transforming, uh, transporting it, um, you know, everything else that comes with it. Um, you don't want to be doing all that and you just absolutely know this place is about to be a, a dud and then now you're wasting time and now you're going to have to move it anyway. So instead of just like by bypassing a, a location that you're like, yeah, this isn't going to cut it and looking for somewhere, somewhere else that has a little bit more potential, you know, just, you know, do your due diligence, do your research, talk to the business owner, find those facts that I just kind of talked about. And sometimes they're not even gonna always tell you the truth on it. They might lie a little bit. So you just kind of have to juggle that. Um, but those are where my ATMs located and those are some things you can do to kind of determine where you're gonna uh, put your ATM or what business you wanna um, kind of like look into, all right? But I'm gonna leave it there, guys. I hope this video is helpful. If it is, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to like the video as well. Um, again, I appreciate all the love and support. Stay up, stay blessed, much love, and I'll talk to you guys with another video.